東京カプセルホテル。みなさん、こんにちは。Welcome everyone to the teaching of Tokyo Capsule Hotel. So I'm going to give a casual teaching as if we were all in the same room at a game table. And we will just work through each piece one at a time. If you have any questions,、uh, you can refer to the current beta rules, which will be linked in the video description. Or you're welcome to comment or send an email to talk at jordandraber.com. And let's jump right in. So, the first thing that we should overview with the game is what we're doing. We are capsule hotel franchise investors in Tokyo in the future. And we are going to be buying land, subdividing that land, buying hotel franchises, maybe selling off pieces of those. Building attractions, perhaps even building a graveyard, which has some negative consequences because of superstitions. And of course, mandatorily taking out a loan at the beginning of the game. So <laughs> that's kind of、uh, the base level of what's going to be going on.、Uh, in the first round, everyone is going to take out a loan of either 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, or 10,000 yen. And then over the next Eight rounds or less, depending on if someone can pay off their loan before the end of the eighth round.、Uh, everyone will have to pay their initial amount of their loan plus interest times the round number. So if you take out a bigger loan, you're going to have more interest as the game goes on than the players who take out smaller loans, but you have more capital to work with. So that's how the game starts and also how the game will end is by paying off a loan plus all the interest. Uh, so, in the first round, there's going to be four phases for every round,、uh, and we're going to go through all of those phases right now. First phase of each round is loans. So, we will check if any players can pay their initial loan plus interest times the round number, as I explained earlier. On the first turn of the game, everybody is going to secretly mark what loan they're going to take. And there are ledger pads which you'll write this amount down、uh, if you want to just play without yen and just use a pen. But if you're going to play with yen, then you'll have these boards to use, these loan boards. So everybody will mark it and then reveal at the same time.、Uh, you'll notice here on this chart that there are these little pink coupon looking、uh, icons, and these allow you to get a coupon. Which is worth 500 yen to buy stuff in the game, but it's not yen that you can use to pay off your debt. So it's like a bonus. So if you take out a 4,000 yen loan, you get a coupon. And coupons look like this. They are little, these little 500 yen coupons. So you mark your loan. Let's say I want to take out 8,000 yen, and we'll say all these players are playing, and it's like this. Okay, this, this player gets this. Ticket, and then all these other players just get the amount of yen marked 8,000 yen, 8,000 yen, 4,000 yen. So, again, you'll mark it on your ledger pad, or you would take the yen physically if you're going to play with real yen. So, that's how the first round would go. You would decide on the loan amount, and if you're in a different round, you would check right at the beginning of the round if a player can pay off their loan. Plus the interest times the round number. So, again, if we were in the third round、uh, and we were looking at this player with 4,000 yen, they would need 4,000 yen plus 400 yen times the third round. So, that's another 1,200 yen. So, they would have to pay 5,200 yen in total in order to trigger the end of the game at the beginning of the round. If they can't do that, and remember, coupons do not count towards that, then we move in to the next phase. Moving right along, phase two. Purchase and barter phase. This is the big one. This is where all the fun stuff happens. So, there's a pretty good number of things you can do, but you're either going to be purchasing something from the game itself or you're going to be bartering and making deals with other players. You can only do one of those two things at a time, but everything in this game during this phase takes place in real time. So, You're going to choose which one of those you want to be doing. And the way that you can tell which one you could do is you have this seal marker, as you can see here. And if you have your seal marker on this rounds bend board, 
and there's also waiting slots, so you can wait in line. If your seal is here, you are not allowed to barter, and that's a pretty hard rule. You have to be deciding to make a purchase. If you're making a purchase, you have five seconds before somebody can say, ah, you haven't decided what you're actually doing, and then you have to take your seal back. Once your seal is back in front of you, now you can be bartering and making deals with other players. So that's how you differentiate those two things. And we're going to go through all of the purchases first, and then we'll talk a little bit about how bartering works, although it is quite open-ended, but there are some rules to it. So first with purchases, let's just say that we have our marker in here. Now, the fun thing about this game is you draw and build the map using pens. So you're actually going to be drawing as the game goes on. If you're using Tabletop Simulator, you can pick a cool color, and then you'll use the draw tool, the pen tool, and make it as small as you can. Use the minus key. Uh, and obviously, if you're doing this in real life, you just have an area in front of you. But I like to do this on the tabletop simulators. Just draw a little area. So now I know, okay, I'm this player. So this is my area where I put all the stuff that I own. And then on the map, you'll draw as well. So in the start of the game, before you even start making purchases or bartering anything in real time, every player that's playing gets to draw around a plot like this. And then they also get a vending machine, which is this little small thing, which I will talk more about in a minute. But this is the, the setup that every player gets. They get one of these four spots. If you're playing with five players, the fifth player gets some extra yen instead of having one of these uh, land squares. So that's the trade-off. Uh, so let's just draw in two more players to show what happens. We'll just say we've got this player here. Okay, so we are set up now. Let's just say oh, we just need to draw this player's outline, and now we are good to go. So we're gonna we're gonna play a three player game. This player's not playing. This player's not playing. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. We're ready to go. So some rules for building things or an overview of how it works. Uh, you can build hotel franchises. This is a franchise. Um, once you buy these pieces, you can start building them into hotels. But for each hotel that you build, each individual hotel itself needs to have either a vending machine or a graveyard on the lot of land that you're building on. So this is why you start with one, because it helps you to build the hotel to get going. And you can also lock these so that they can't move anymore. Uh, on Tabletop Simulator. Okay, so let's jump in. Purchases. Here are the options for what purchases you can make. The first one is to buy a plot of land. This is like a big, larger plot of land. You decide which one you want. You can flip it over. You can rotate it in any orientation you want. It just has to share some kind of a side with another plot, larger plot of land. So this would be loud. Let's just say that this pink player they have 8000 8, yen let's say that they are the ones making this purchase okay they would take this grab their color and they would trace around the outside That came out orange, didn't it? That works. Okay, we'll just pretend it was an orange player. So the orange player spent 5,000 yen and they bought this larger plot of land. They would now own this land. They would pay 5,000 yen to the bank. And when you're playing with yen, you put your yen on this yen spot and then move this little marker up to 5,000 yen. Because every time you buy something from the game, it pushes forward towards ending the purchase phase which would move you into the income phase. So as soon as collectively players together, depending on player count, spend a certain amount. So in this three-player game, if once everyone cumulatively has spent 12,000 yen, 
sorry, more than 12,000 yen, because that's the line, then that would trigger the end of the round. Or the phase, excuse me, the end of the phase within the round. So uh, you have to exceed 12,000 yen. Coupons do add to this. So if somebody spends a coupon, it would add 500 yen to that bonus or to that count. That's how the round end would trigger. So let's just say that this player bought this plot of land and then everybody has their seals back. They could now barter with another player and say, uh, I think I would like to sell this part of this land. Maybe I draw it about here and I want a thousand yen for it. Okay, another player decides, uh, yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay. So these two players, now the player that is selling the land has to draw the subdivision, and then another player can purchase it. They pay the person that sold it to them, then they would trace around their new plot of land, and this subdivision would now belong to another player. Whatever money was exchanged between players does not affect the round spend board. So if this was already at 5,000 yen, it would not matter what players trade. That just is a, a barter thing that happens outside of buying things from the game. So that's pretty much how land works. If you buy land, again, larger plots have to touch other large plots or share aside somehow. And then once a large plot exists, players can subdivide that land and sell it or barter it away however they want. And then everybody who is on the same larger plots, remember there's two players on this larger plot of land because this is just a subdivision, they will share all of the income bonuses and detriments on that lot. So you're locked in together depending on what happens here, which we'll talk about in a minute. And that's how land works. Uh, these are also considered larger plots of land. So they give bonuses and everything independently, uh, which we'll talk more about too. But that's a base overview of how land works. Let's go to the next purchase. Let's say that a player wants to buy a hotel franchise. And again, I'm not keeping track of the yen. I'm just explaining what you can do in the game right now. Uh, so this pink player is in here. Let's say they want to buy a hotel franchise. You look down here on this board, and you can see there are different numbers of capsules for different amounts of money. So all of these, like salmon-colored capsules, are 3,500 yen for all of them together, all 15 of them. Or you could get 10 of these yellow ones for 2,000 yen. So let's just say that this pink player wants to buy all of the yellow capsules. So what they would do is take all of them and they would pay 2,000 yen to the bank. Okay. Boom. Remember to move this up. And now they own all of these capsules. They are not on the board yet. Everything that you do as a purchase action is an independent thing and you only get to do one thing. So one purchase action. Buying a plot of land is a purchase action. Buying a set of franchise capsules is a purchase action. So you don't get to just build hotels and do whatever you want with them. You put them, in this case, you buy them and you put them in front of you. And then at a later time, when you want to go back in and make a purchase action, you would go back in there and do that separately. Uh, so we'll talk about how you can build these uh, next, which is to buy entrances. And in order to do that, you would go back in as a separate purchase action. Maybe you have to wait in line because somebody else is doing a purchase. Just depends. Uh, and then you would pay 1,000 yen for an entrance. Let's just say you pay 1,000 yen there. And then you can build as many units as you want into your hotel. However, you have to have as many units on the ground floor as there are units high. So if I wanted to build too high, I have to have at least two units on the ground floor. I could just have two units on the ground floor like this, as long as I can fit the entrance somewhere, uh, which here you can see would not really work. So the starting lot, the most you can build 
is one entrance on one single unit. And if you remember, you have to have a vending machine or a graveyard in order to build an entrance. So because there's already a vending machine here, I can build an entrance. That would cost me a thousand yen, and then I now have a hotel there. Now, we'll talk more about hotel income, but as a fun note, for every hotel on the map, the base level income that, that, that all hotels of that color will make goes up by 100 yen. And then, for every large plot of land that has any hotels of that color, it goes up another 100 yen. So, there's one yellow hotel on here for 100 yen, and then it's on one larger plot of land. Remember, this counts as a larger plot of land. It goes up another 100. So, all yellow hotels on the entire map during the income phase will make at least 200 yen. That'll be their, their base level of income currently. All right, let's uh, just set another example. Let's say that this orange player has these blue hotel franchises and they want to build a blue hotel. Well, they could build an entrance, but there is one really cool other attraction, which we're going to talk about attractions soon, but if you want to buy coin laundry, you can pay 2,000 yen, and then... Sorry, this was the pink player, so let's move that over there. You can pay 2,000 yen, and then you do not have to have an entrance, and you just put down this coin laundry. You still need a vending machine or a graveyard, and then you can place one or two hotel units on top of the coin laundry. And so that's this is the only exception to not needing an entrance is if you build a coin laundry. Now, coin laundries, again, entrances are 1,000, coin laundries are 2,000, but the coin laundries let you roll a dice during the income phase, and they give a bonus amount of yen to um, every single hotel on the same large plot of land as them. So this one, there's no other hotels, but if this this coin laundry was on this big plot of land, then any other hotels here would get the bonus that the roll would give. So let's just say this is the way that it is right now. Again, remember how we calculate there's one blue hotel just built it all. And then there's another bonus because there's a blue hotel on one large plot of land. So that gives it another 100. So right now, both of these hotels would get 200 yen base income. Okay, so to recap, you need a vending machine or you need a graveyard on your same large plot of land that you own or subdivision. Uh, and then you can build an entrance or you can build a coin laundry with capsule units. If you build a coin laundry, you have to have at least one capsule unit to put on top of it. Okay, so that is how franchises work. There's one special franchise, the pink the pink ones. When you go in, you pay 2,000 yen for the first one that you're going to buy and then another 500 yen for every one after that. And you can just buy as many as you want, but it's like a one it's a one-time purchase based on that formula. But the nice thing about these is they work just like other hotels, except if you stack at least four high, you can just ignore the rule that you have to build as wide as you do high. You can just build straight up like a skyscraper. Um, But you have to have at least four of them plus an entrance. So that's why these are special and you don't buy all of them together at once like the other ones. So that covers all of the franchises. Let's now talk about attractions. So again, we've been going in and buying stuff. Let's go back in here and say we're going to buy some other things. Let's say we wanted to buy a graveyard. Okay, well, the cool thing about graveyards, and I'm just going to set up another plot of land here so that we can see how this will work. Let's just say the green player again, we're not keeping track of money. But we'll just say that this player has this plot of land. All right. They want to buy a graveyard. Well, they've got their seal in there. They're making a purchase action. You actually get money when you buy a graveyard. You get 200 yen. So he could just choose, let's say that uh, they want to put it right there. Okay, they get 200 yen from the bank. So you would take the yen. This does not affect the round spend at all. You don't minus anything from it. But 
The downside is, now that this graveyard is here, every hotel that ends up on this plot of land, let's just say that there's a hotel that gets end up, ends up being built here. And remember, they have a graveyard, so now they're allowed to build an entrance. This hotel and any other hotels that get built here, they get minus 100 yen during the income phase because every graveyard that is built minuses 100 yen income from every hotel on that plot. Okay, so that's how that works. If instead they had wanted to build a vending machine, they would have to pay 500 yen, which they could pay for with a coupon, and that would add on to the round total. And then they would just be able to put a vending machine where they want. So either get 200 yen for a graveyard or pay 500 yen for a vending machine. We already talked about the coin laundry. The dice rolls, it's like a D6 the bonus is between 0 and 500 yen. We'll talk more about that soon. But if you roll a 0, you get a coupon. Whoever built the coin laundry. Not all players, just whoever built it. Sweets buffet, you pay 3,000 yen. You have to be able to fit it on your lot. There's no pre-requirement to build it. And then it gives a bigger bonus to all hotels on that lot. So between 200 and 1,000 yen. Or maybe a coupon bonus. So that's how Sweets buffet works. The park... This is quite a bit bigger, as you can see. Uh, and the general rule is if it's really close to fitting, you're allowed to do it. Uh, but you, you can't fudge it too much. Okay, so the park. The park gives you a 500, 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 yen bonus to all hotels being built on this lot. And now that we're getting into these bigger numbers during the income, this is why it matters how many hotel units you have in your hotel. If you have one hotel unit, that hotel can only make up to 1,000 yen. If you have two hotel units in that hotel, it can make up to 2,000 yen. So for every extra unit you have in the hotel, it can make an extra 1,000 yen potential. So this hotel could make up to 4,000 yen. Now let's say during the income phase, we're going to roll a dice for the park. Okay, so it made a 1,000 yen bonus. Well, that would give this hotel an extra 1,000 yen above whatever the base level is. So uh, in this case, because there was two yellow hotels and they're on two large plots of land, the base level would be 400 and then it would get a 1,000 yen bonus from the park roll. That would give it 1,400 yen that it would make. It had a potential cap of 4,000 yen. So that's how the caps work. Um the arcade is pretty similar. It's 500 to 4,000 yen, so it's just a bit more, but it is quite big and would not really fit there, but it would fit, for example, here if you wanted to build it. Um, and then the Sumo Dokyo is even bigger, uh, but it gives a higher bonus. So these just kind of roll and they give you a bonus, and we're going to talk all about that in just a second. Uh, but when you do build them, they have a base side, but if you once you play more and get used to the game, you can see there's extra things that the buildings do, such as ignoring graveyards and just having a fixed income bonus. Uh, you can the park can give extra income to every larger plot touching the one it's built on. Um, the mega hotel can just give you a fixed amount of income and a coupon, and then the sumo could become something that uh, gets rid of entrance requirements such as vending machines and graveyards so these things are like more strategy you can put into the game they also level out the randomness so if you really wanted to you could just play with the b-sides and then you wouldn't have to worry about rolling the die as much um but that is what these cards are for they add a lot of re extra replayability even though this game is quite uh robust in its replayability because it's so varied every time you play and very player dependent Okay, so I think that is everything that we've gone through. We talked about buying land. We talked about buying franchises. We talked about buying attractions, graveyards, vending machines. That is all of the purchases that you can make. And again, remember when you spend over 12,000 yen from all players combined in this three-player game, as soon as it crosses that barrier from players making purchase decisions one at a time, purchase one thing at a time, um, then we will go into the income phase. So some really quick notes. Uh, when you buy land, you don't, you never just take this piece. You have to immediately put it down where you're going to build it, pay for it, and then trace around it. 
when you buy franchises, you take the capsule pieces and put them in front of you. You do not build them immediately because you need an entrance uh, or a coin laundry. And before you can even do that, you have to have already gone in and made a separate purchase, uh, which if you buy a vending machine, you have to immediately put it on the map. You never put a vending machine in front of you. Same with a graveyard, immediately put it on the map. So these you immediately put down. Uh, any of the attractions you immediately put down on the map, you don't put them in front of you. The only things that you keep in front of you are the hotel franchises. So that is how purchases work. Now, if you're going to barter, you have to trade something for something. You can't just give somebody something. Uh, but you are allowed to sort of make future deals, but none of them are binding. So don't put too much weight on that. Try to play fair. Be competitive about what a, what a fair deal is or not. Don't uh, triangulate if you can avoid it because, for one, you might be helping another player way more than you think. And uh, it's it's usually advantageous to not help one player more than another. So try to work out what's fair. But, you know, when you're subdividing land, it's up to what you want to work out. Maybe you give a coupon and some uh, franchise units in trade for a subdivision. It's it's really up to you, but money is super tight in the game, especially as the rounds move on. So uh, don't overspend your first game. Get a little bit used to it. Be a little more conservative. Uh, and remember that if you spend all your money on land, you're definitely not going to have enough to buy other things. Uh, and if you spend all your money on hotel franchises, where are you going to build it? You need some land and then you have to get entrances and all these other things. So uh, just keep all that in mind as you're playing the game. And then that is how we, we've gone through it and talked about all the purchases. The bartering is up to you. And again, one more time, this track that moves up to trigger the end of the open purchase and barter phase, it gets triggered only from actual yen and coupons cumulatively spent during the round. It has nothing to do with players bartering with each other. All right, so once we move past that and go into the income phase, we're just going to simulate that. Let's just say we're on the third round right now, and I'm just going to build out a few more things. Let's just say, I mean, obviously with a lower loan, this player might not have been able to afford this, but let's just say that there's been some bartering going on, and this player has built another hotel. All here with an entrance and a weird angled sweets buffet. Why not? And they would have had to have this. We'll put a graveyard here and we'll say that this player has, this orange player has this. And we'll say. It's on top of Sweet's Buffet. Over here. So they're allowed to have had this because it would have been... They would have already have had to have these capsules. Then they would have spent one purchase action to get the graveyard and then another purchase action to build the coin laundry. But let's just say this is the setup. At the beginning of the income phase, I would always check to see where all of the income base levels are and that they're correct. So... We'll start with yellow. So there's three yellow hotels built here, as you can see. Uh, for each each hotel is an entrance or coin laundry. So that's how you can tell what's a hotel. So there's one, two, three. That would be 300 yen. Plus, they're on one, two, three large plots of land. So that would mean it has a base level of 600. Now, as the game was going on, you can see there's these coupon markers on the franchise income board. If you own and have if you've built and owned uh currently own excuse me a hotel on your land of that color as soon as this marker moves up because you'd move this up in real time as you're building every player who owns that color would get a pink coupon so let's just say um before this was built because it would have hit the 500 the green player and the pink player owned a yellow one then they would have gotten a coupon right when the new one that was built that pushed that amount up. Okay, actually the orange player would have got one too because they would have been the one that triggered it to move up twice. So they also would have got a coupon. Um, 
And right now it's at 600. Three hotels, three large plots of land. Easy. Uh, the blue is still at 200. One hotel, one large plot of land. Now let's just make an example out of, let's just say theoretically that instead the game state was like this, just to make it clear. You would now have one, two, three, four yellow, or yeah, four yellow hotels on one, two, three large plots of land. So it would actually be at 700. So again, independent hotels plus the number of large plots that have any hotel of that color, each move it up 100 yen. Blue would have 200. Silver would also have 200 because it's on one large plot of land and there's one hotel. So this would be the income during this income phase as far as base income levels go. Now you're going to go through one by one and check for the bonuses and minuses from the income. So this orange player who has this blue hotel, they would roll the coin laundry dice. So that's this dice right here. Should have locked those pieces down. Uh, okay, so they roll the dice. They got 200 yen. So there's a 200 yen bonus to all hotels on this larger plot. That's just this one. So we would look and say, okay, blue makes 200 yen plus another 200 yen. So that player gets 400 yen for their blue hotel. So you would just give them the 400 yen, or if you're using the ledgers, you would minus 400 yen from your ledger and write down the new total. Or sorry, plus the 400 yen, obviously, it's income. Uh, then pink, the pink player, they just have a hotel that makes up to 1,000 yen because there's one unit, and yellows make 700 yen, so they would just get 700 yen. Now look at this more interesting example with this orange plot of land. This orange player would first... They would have this graveyard. So every player, even if this pink player had built a hotel here, um, all hotels here get minus 100 yen. So whatever the base is, you just minus 100 yen from that. Then we're going to roll for the bonus of their coin laundry, which is a separate roll from the one earlier because that was different coin laundry building. So this one is 500 yen. Okay, so it's minus 100 yen for this graveyard. If there were two graveyards, it would be minus 200 yen. Um but right now there's one. So minus 100 plus 500. So that's a, a cumulative plus 400 yen. So this hotel would make 1,100 yen because it can make up to 2,000. It didn't hit the cap. So they get 1,100 yen for this one. And this other one can only make up to 1,000. So even though it it had an 1,100 yen income, it caps out and only makes 1,000. So they would get 2,100 yen in total for these two. Now let's move down here and look at this very interesting setup. So sweets buffet, the green player would roll a sweets buffet dice. And again, this is all during the income phase. Okay. Well, 600 yen. So every hotel on this lot gets a 600 yen bonus. That would give 1300 yen to this yellow one. It has up to 4,000 capacity. So it would make the full 1300. And then this silver one, 600 plus 200, it would make 800 yen. And it could have made up to 2,000, but it just made 800. So you take the payout from all of your hotels, take the yen back. Then what do we do? We've paid out all of the income. All players now move up the round marker, or they would mark it on their ledger. Now we have a coupon symbol here. So before anything else happens, all players get a coupon because during the beginning of the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds of the game, every player gets a coupon. That's what this little symbol means, which coupons can only be used to purchase things from the game or to barter with other players, but they do not count towards your yen total. So if we were going to see if somebody could end the game, and obviously we're not keeping track of yen, but let's just say that this player had 5,000, 6,000 yen, we would say, okay, it's the beginning of the round. They need to pay 4,000 yen plus 400 times four because they're on the fourth round. That's their interest. So another 1,600. They would need to pay 5,600. Okay, and they have 6,000. They can do that. Their coupons do not count again, but they would be able to do that. So they would pay their 5,600 and they would be left with 1,400 yen. And that would be their endgame score. And then other players, if they didn't have enough yen to pay their loan, let's just say this person had 6,000 yen, 
but they need to pay 8,000 plus 800 times 4, another 3,200, so they are well short. They would not trigger game end, and they would end in debt. And then, let's just say this player also ended in debt. This player would automatically win because they had positive yen. If two players have positive yen uh, when the game end is triggered, then whoever has the most yen would win the game. And that's how the game could end in an earlier round if someone manages to pay off their loan and all their interest at the beginning. If nobody could pay it off, we would just play into the next uh, phase, which would be the purchase and barter phase, and go through that to to the income phase and continue. And you would move up this round marker... If nobody has been able to pay off their initial loan plus interest by the end of the eighth round, then the game ends automatically, and whoever has the least debt or the most yen at that point would win the game. Uh, So it will either end early or at the end of the eighth round. And that is Tokyo Capsule Hotel. So thanks for sticking through this whole video and uh, giving the game a shot. Uh, If you want to give it a play on tabletop simulator um maybe you can find somebody to play if not let me know i'm happy to see if i can fit in some more uh demo sessions you can again send me an email talk at jordandraper.com and uh feel free to read through the rule book which will be more thorough and in-depth than what i've taught here although it is still a beta rules and i hope you have a great day sayonara